Are you a meat and potatoes kind of person? Well, if so, you're going to love the roast dinner that we are cooking up on the show today. Joining us is Chad Flazinski and Cheryl Johnson. They're from Taylor's Tavern in Greenfield. We're making prime rib yes, sir. with all the fixings. All the fixings. All how, the fixings. How there. does one start? Because the thing is, when you go to the store and you say, I'm in a prime rib mood, you immediately get terrified because the prime rib is huge. Yeah, it seems huge. You do lose a little bit of volume when you cook it uh, as the fat disappears and evaporates in the oven. But uh, for the most part, it's it's just like cooking any other piece of meat. You just got to have the right technique and then everything from there is easy. Don't be afraid of it then. Don't be afraid. How does one no. start though? How do you start with a meal? I would start by going to the butcher and okay. getting the size of meat I want. So I'm going to have four to five people over. So I'm going to get about a four pound rib. So they'll, roughly they'll, a pound per person? Uh, uh, roughly because okay. it'll cook down and um, this is the the piece I got from our butcher, that would be Chad. <laughs> in-house right. butcher today. In-house. In nice yeah. yeah. So yeah. this started out as mm -hmm. about 14 pounds. And now you cut okay. you cut it we as to what you want. We it to cut be. this into a four-pound chunk so that we could serve four people with it. Uh, so what we do is we season it with garlic, salt, pepper, and onion powder. Garlic, and rosemary. salt, pepper, onion powder, rosemary. So this is nothing like the pulled pork we did. We don't have to rub it. We just uh, oh, I was right, I was ready to get right, dirty no, and rub it. So just so just sprinkle okay. it on. Okay. Little spritzer. Yeah, little spritzer. So this, what we're going to cook it, we're going to cook it at 450 degrees for the first 15 minutes. We call blasting the rib. That's plenty. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unless <laughs> you want a heart very attack. Very salty rib. <laughs> very salty rib. We can just shake it All up right, a little yeah, bit. All right, yeah, we should there probably we do that. There we go. And then just about half of this rosemary. <laughs> there we go. Now I know. Because you sometimes, you know, when it's in there, you want to put the whole thing in. Right. I don't know. So we're going to blast this, like I said, for 15 minutes. It's going to get a nice seared coating on the outside where you I get understand. that crispiness. It's going to seal in the juices. Then we're going to turn the oven down to 225 for about an hour and a half. And we're going to come up with a temperature about 115 to 130, which is medium rare for most people. And that's when you know it's done. That's when we know it's done. Sure, you want to toss uh, this one well, in? Well, actually, this is a one-pan meal. Easy and OK. E yes, we're making this very easy. So we have some acorn squash. Now, not a lot of people use acorn squash, but it seems pretty easy. Easy, easy right? Easy. Yeah, okay. yeah. Very easy. And an ice cream scoop or a bigger serving spoon is the best way to de-seed them. And so you just cut them right down in half, cut the roots off either end, de-seed them all out. We'll cut them in half, and now we'll give the them a light like? seasoning. Is it similar to a butternut squash? Yeah, it's it? similar to a butternut squash. Winter squash is how okay. us in the res restaurant business classify it because they're all kind of along the same lines. You can cook them all the same way. You can roast them, boil them, mash them. But I gotta say, if people were coming over to my house having a dinner party, you expect the traditional squash. If you get something like this. You're blown away. You it's tell a little your friends different. It. It's a little different. So I'm gonna set these around the rib <laughs> here. I had the nicest squash last night. We're gonna add some potatoes. Okay. So to make roasted red potatoes, we're gonna cut them into about inch cubes or so. Skin therefore. on. Skin on. That's why we use red potatoes, nice and easy. And it looks good too. You don't have to peel them all. Yeah. So we'll go with the same mixture that we use for the rib. Now don't use too much. You're not supposed to use that whole thing. No, no. I'm <laughs> a learned, good seasoner. I'm I learned a good that seasoner. the hard way. Uh, and then um, a little bit of rosemary, and you can go a little heavy on the rosemary because it gives the potatoes a really, really nice flavor. And you just roll it around in the oil, and we'll sprinkle it in alongside of the rib there, and we'll put it in the oven and give it a blast. That's and when it, you just, guys come back, just we'll, one uh, pan. That's we'll it. have them ready. All right, why don't one we pop pan. this in the oven? And we'll finish it up in a little bit. Yes, All right, don't sir. you go anywhere because we're going to finish it out. But I wish you could smell this studio right now. <laughs> it smells tremendous because we're back with Chad Flazinski and Cheryl Johnson. You're from Taylor's Tavern in Greenfield, and we've got one delicious prime rib right here. Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, we just took the rib out of the oven. It's been a an hour and a half TV time. Yeah, TV time. So real nice. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same as real time. No. So a lot of times uh, when you're doing burgers, you're looking for how the blood runs. When you're doing steaks, you're looking by the feel. Unfortunately, with ribs, you, you got to use a thermometer. That's the best way to tell. You're looking, like Cheryl said, 120 to about 130 or so is right about what you're looking for for a family dinner. Now, when you put this thermometer in, though, where do you want, like, A, when you have a thermometer, where does the temperature read from? And B, where do you put it? So in the thermometer, I always go right in the thickest part of the roast. Because that's where it's going to be the thickest part raw. of the chicken. Mm -hmm. That's okay. where it's going to be the most raw. And most thermometers, about an inch, an inch and a half up on the uh, post, there is a sensor. And that's the sensor that you want to make sure is in the middle. So when you're plunging this in, you almost want to go through the center of yeah, it. Yeah, you want to go, you want to make sure you put it right in and, and almost go right to the bottom. That way it's, it's up an inch or so off the bottom of the roast and you can really kind of make sure you're in the center and making sure everything's all right. And so now that we made sure it was all right, 
I'm now gonna you, give it a nice slice, yeah. and then you guys can dig in but if you, you like. But you said you want to let it sit. How long should you let it sit for? Right. Well, you would like to let it sit ideally for 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, Good okay. time to gather family and friends and and make sure that you're ready to have everything. And get them. everyone really excited to try it. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys excited? That's what you've done excited. here. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten really excited. The, now this, uh, the the rosemary's on there. You can go ahead and cut. Sorry, I'm just sure, asking sure, question sure. while you do it. The the crust that's on there is that just from browning in the oven? Just that nice yeah. natural browning. Yeah. Initially, we uh we heated it. Uh, we blasted it at mm -hmm. 450 for 15 minutes and that's what creates this nice dark coating along the outside and then once you slow the temperature down to about 225 it should come out and look Perfect. something just like this. Now, Cheryl, while Chad's finishing up, tell us about the other things that we have here. I see potatoes and is that acorn squash again? Yes, it is acorn squash. It's a lot like butternut. Um, most people don't try to peel it, so you usually roast it in the skin. This we roasted with olive oil, salt, pepper, and maple syrup. And we did the rosemary roasted potatoes, the same seasoning as we put on the rib. And again, we put this all in one pan, so all you have is one pan when you're all done to clean up. I clean love up. that. I right. love that. That's yes. wonderful. Thanks so much for yes. sharing the recipe. Okay. And if you want a copy of this recipe, you can visit us online at mymassappeal.com later on today.